You're listening to To Hatch a Pod with Key Budge, Corey Costello, and Greg Garrett. To Hatch a Pod time again. Key Budge, Greg Garrett, Corey Costello join me today. Guys, how are you? Doing good, Key. Good. I think it's been a while since we've all three been around and done one since uh, I think the last time we talked to John Hammond. So good. Yeah, that has been a while. Now. Is yeah. that a good thing or a bad thing? Great. It's a good show. That's it's a good thing. We got a lot John of John's show. Was, I listened to it yesterday. It was amazing. And you know what? Part of that show, we talked about the 1952 earthquake, mm-hmm. what kind of plays into what we're talking about today. Springboarded today's Perfect segue, Keith. Right? Exactly. Nice. So, <laughs> so let's go ahead and, and let's invite in our guests. We've got the warden from CCI, our California Correctional Institute here in Tehachapi, Brian Cates. Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. And Eric, I'm going to butcher your last name again, Barthelms. Barthelmus. That's, Barthelmus. That's why I go by Bart to make it easier. <laughs> Eric Bart, yeah. <laughs> Eric, you're the, the PIO for CCI, and you and I have had a chance to have lots of conversations over the last couple of years, so we finally got this show together. Finally, after a uh, little scheduling conflicts between our two... Uh, parties but we're here i think you're just keeping the warden you know at bay you know that way he just <laughs> <laughs> now eric does an amazing job he attends the edc meetings the chamber meetings and brian you know running a city within a city kudos to you well thank you i was gonna say he's isn't he like the city manager of the uh, largest gated hoa yeah, in the maybe, city? yeah. Huh? it, it, it kind of feels like that at times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh. So what we started to talk about was John Hammond. We talked about the 70-year anniversary of the 1952 earthquake. The 52 quake was pivotal in the direction that CCI went because originally built back in the 30s, it was a women's prison. 1933, originally 19- built and opened as a women's prison. So it was open for about 20 years. We had the 52 earthquake. They had to close the doors. Shut it down. And then rebuilt? Yeah, rebuilt in 19... Well, they finished rebuilding in 1954 and opened it up as a a men's prison, a version of what we have today. We've added many facilities since then. So we're coming up on the the 70th anniversary of the men's version of the prison. And then overall, gosh, what's that? 90 years that the prison has been a fabric of Tehachapi out at the end of the 202 highway Mm -hmm. out there in Cummings Valley. So, Brian, I was looking at a little bit at your career. You've had several positions at CCI oh, in your yeah. career. Yeah, I was lucky enough to start my career at CCI in Tashby. That was my first assignment when I started for the uh, California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Worked there for about eight years, doing various jobs around the prison, virtually all the jobs. And what I call traveled around the state, different prisons, doing uh, different jobs, promoting and special projects and such. And then was lucky enough to come back to CCI late 2017 as the chief deputy warden and now the warden at CCI. I remember you were interim warden for a while and then the governor actually made it official. When did that happen? A couple of years ago? Actually, the official date was September of the, of last year, of 2021. Oh, wow. Okay. So you've been the warden, but not officially until September of last year. So congratulations. You earned your wings. You came up through the ranks. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing. Homegrown talent, I believe, is the best. It's been interesting to see the facility change. We talked about the change from a female prison to a male prison, but you know, especially those of us who are here, the mid 80s when the expansions were happening at that facility. I mean, that was a sort of a growth spurt for Tehachapi because you were bringing in new staff. It really was a time when a lot of folks were brought into this community to start working there. Yeah, right around the mid 80s, they opened up three facilities, just one after another. And with that, obviously, it opens up jobs and opportunities for all kinds of areas and for the city of Tehachapi. Yeah, and used to be able to, like, not not so much anymore because we're so diverse uh, in terms of where people work and that sort of thing, but you used to be able to set your watch by the, the shift change times mm. at CCI. Because especially given our traffic, 202 was pretty much it. And, and the, that, you, the gas stations and the convenience stores would be busy at certain times in the morning, and then they'd 4 o'clock-ish or so when the shift change went on. And you just knew it was shift change at CCI because... Now here, here came all the cars. But now that's been smoothed. It does seem to be smoother. You know, uh, when I started CCI, we had two distinct uh, shift times. Yeah. Right. And now we've consolidated, they yeah. consolidated that to one uh, one shift time. Uh, the city seems very able to handle it. Didn't didn't cause a, a lot of big problems. Yeah, so we sure. did uh, discuss that with you all. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it. that. Yeah. We didn't yeah, want to yeah. have too big yeah. an impact. Yeah. But, but it's, uh, it's smooth for me as a resident out there on that West End. That I used to see it. And you'd get, you know, either part of the the ant trail of cars coming or going. And now it's, I don't even have, can't even tell when the shift change is. So it's been nice as a resident because it's uh, running smoothly. Well, CCI is a beautiful part of the fabric of Tehachapi. Let's talk about the city within the city, the economic impact. What's going on out there? You don't, you're not just uh, a, a facility full of correctional officers and prisoners, right? 
Oh, you have professionals. You have a lot of money that's coming and going, and administration, doctors, dentists, teachers, all of those sorts of things. We have, and when you say a city within a city, you are absolutely correct. We have everything we need to be self-sufficient for some period of time and every position you can imagine to make that happen with obviously a heavy custody you know, police presence, if you will, uh, for our incarcerated folks that are there. But we have positions for all manner of trades from carpentry, plumbing, electrician. We have doctors, nurses, CNAs, LVNs, psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers. We have loads of clerical staff and uh, analysts and freshwater operators, fresh, oh, wastewater yeah, operators. Wastewater, I mean, you just, it goes, this is probably, Tehachapi is probably the only city in Kern that has two city managers. You and I. <laughs> I think your, yours is a little larger city, but uh, you, may, you may be yeah. on the When, when people misbehave in this city, you can't just lock them down. Yeah, I guess. You know, we can't and I guess do you don't have retail. So I got something up. They have a commissary for, for the yeah, inmates, right? Oh, that's, that's true. We have a little <laughs> do you tax them? We need to get tax revenue on that. Uh, yeah. Now, your operating budget. I you, we Recently, we were at a meeting at the Economic Development Council, and that number was staggering to me. It was in that two hundred million dollar annual, yeah, two hundred, mm-hmm. right around two hundred million. Wow! I mean, that's that's a lot of money that this prison. I mean, and you get multiple prisons, but it's that's a lot of money that comes that you have to manage. Yes, and uh, you know that that money we have a, we are it represents a lot of uh, staff and inmates, about thirty two hundred inmates, and somewhere in the neighborhood of fifteen hundred and forty uh, staff members to to help keep that facility running and bring those rehabilitative programs to, you know, to the inmate population and, and towards the end, you know, as the inmates get out of prison to the community, right? That's where the rehabilitative properties really come in. Mm-hmm. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about those rehabilitative programs because I know, Eric, you know, you and I have talked about some of those. Some of those are give back to the community involvement. And they, is that to give the prisoners a sense of community or, or giving back in the way that they can? So the, the charitable giving happens through food sales, and just like people on the streets, uh, the inmates that we have incarcerated, they have accounts as well. They have a, accounting budgets. And at least twice a year, each facility has the opportunity to have a food sale. And we'll link up with a local entity, uh, Red House Barbecue, Conan's, the pizza place is anywhere. And we will provide a menu to the inmate population. They will be able to purchase whatever we set as the max amount, maybe 150 bucks to spend. And they'll spend that money, purchase the food, but then a percentage will get taken of that and go towards a charitable giving around here. And usually the inmate population will decide who they want to give that money to. So we've given to plenty of charities around the area, $25,000 last year alone. We've already done 5000 earlier in our last charitable giving. So it's, it's just a constant effort. And the inmates do start taking ownership of things that they're doing around here. Um, Stallion Springs is one of them that they've contributed to constantly, and they're helping rebuild their baseball fields out there, their concession stands. So they've taken that opportunity to just rebuild a whole area rather than trickle things to many different ones. They want to take care of one thing and then move on to the next. So we sometimes wonder why we're giving them opportunities to buy food, to buy things and do do stuff. But it's also giving back to the community at the same time if we, if we look at that positive aspect. What about the, the vote? I remember years ago, I, uh, I took a tour of uh, a voluntary tour of the inside of the prison um, <laughs> and uh, with, with some news, some news media and got to really see a lot of the vocational programs. I think at the time uh, that big was like upholstery was big and there was several things. I know some of those have changed, but what are some of the, you know, voc ed programs that are out there for these inmates in order to kind of learn a skill, things you have uh, on, on campus? Just like the warden talked about, we're, we're a city within a city. So Whatever you think that a city needs to function, we have a vocation for that. We have auto body classes. We have our own motor pool where these guys are learning how to operate on vehicles, work on vehicles. They're actually obtaining certificates. So when they get out, if they get out, these guys are actually able to take the certification and get an actual auto mechanics job. So that certification gives them a a foot up. And by providing certifications such as auto body, they're able to get jobs that make meaningful money. So when they make the meaningful money, they're not relying on the quick money that got them in there in the first place. So So you're not just Department of Corrections any longer. You're Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation because... If you parole somebody and you just put them on the street with no skills, they might end up back in the system. And what you're doing is a positive, right? You're giving them something that they can work towards when they are released. They can go back to their hometown, hopefully, 
and get a job. Absolutely. Right? The, the entire goal is to make them productive members of society to the extent that they can be. The department has come a long way from when I first started reducing that recidivism rate, uh, which is the rate in which they return to prison. And a big piece of that is giving them some constructive and meaningful tools to utilize when they get out and be able to provide for their families and their loved ones. And then when you're sitting in prison, you want you want something to do. I, I can imagine going stir crazy. You So it's a positive while you're there serving time. And then when you get out, then you can be, become part of, of society again, really part of your family unit. Absolutely. It, it does serve both purposes. You know, as we all know, boredom's not a great thing. Mm-hmm. And day after day, that is not good for anyone. So if we intend to have better members of society come out of prison. We have to give them the, the skills and motivation. And it's not just the skill to do the work, time management skills. You have to get up in the morning, you have responsibilities, those type things that, that keep them going and give them some coping mechanisms when they get when things go bad how do i keep going how do i keep doing that so there are they required to take these courses do they test to see what kind of skills they may have or do they choose kind of as an elective so it depends on the course some things they're required to take certain education courses your basic education courses if they don't have a high school diploma then we require those those courses some of the vocations and different courses they get to choose which ones they would like like to do or they have an interest in i want to dive into education a bit because you brought that up is uh, we have a we have a very robust sort of partnership with Saracoso Community College, and they're out. They basically have their own campus on your campus. So, what sort of things is Saracoso out there doing and and uh, providing for for your your inmates? Oh, well, Saracoso has been a, a great partner. They they uh, provide education. You know, even, normally it's evening education for associate's degrees. For uh, we have a couple of bachelor's degree graduates, and I believe we have the highest. Or among the highest graduation rate in the, in the state of California with CCI Sarasoso. does CCI okay. does yeah ah, kudos yeah, yeah. good yeah. job we, we have the largest face to face college in the state yes and that makes I mean that makes a huge difference for Saracoso as a you know when they were starting to just build up here in Tehachapi they were trying to do th- simple things just getting highway signage and they said well the rules are you don't have you have to have this many this many students and they for their campus over here on Snyder they didn't have that and they said wait a second we have inmate students that are face to face and so you know they counted that into the student body to help them get some signage and some marketing and things like that and then and just to have those courses out there and have again to the same as the job skill the education piece somebody goes into that high school diploma but they, at least they leave with the GED and maybe some job skills, it's a little bit better chance they're not going to come back. Well, and I've said it's, it's better to have a church on every corner than a bar. And I know council member Joan Pogancord is part of a faith-based organization here in town. And she goes out to the prison regularly and teaches, you know, faith. You know, she has a class that she participates in. And, and she told me that the, it's growing. So inmates choose, they can kind of go to church, if you will. Oh, absolutely. And I I think it's super important, right? Family units, God, all that, that really matters these days. You need to have your priorities straight. Yeah, those social connections, be it church, family, both. We encourage volunteers. We have self-help groups and such that uh, we also offer some employment for, if anyone's interested in that, down the road. Um, (laughs) We try to keep those lines of communication open with religious services, with the families, visiting, letters, phone calls, whatever we can do to keep their interest up. Keep the balance. you got to keep the balance. Keep keep their interest up and and their mind off things that may uh, not be the right choice or the right path to take. So you mentioned employment opportunities. Let's talk about that. You have a website. If you wanted to become a state employee and work for CDCR, what would be your first step? First step, go to our website, www.cdcr.ca.gov.careers. And that website is very inclusive. It will have a step-by-step how to apply for the state of California, how to take exams, exam sample tests and such so that you can be familiar with the content on the test. You begin by filling out your application, take an exam that you may be interested in. Once you pass the examination, then you're placed on a typically placed on a hiring list, and you will start to receive letters of interest in the state of California for various places. Maybe somebody listening is looking for a job. Great careers. From what I understand, too, and it used to be be very difficult to sort of get a post into Hatchaby because it was such a desirable facility for folks to work at um, because the, the institutions are spread all over the state. 
and uh, some places where it's extremely hot out in the desert and and then places on the coast which are probably nice but it's very expensive to live there so what is the sort of what's is that still like that today is this a very desirable post for people to come work at Tashby does appear to be uh, to remain a desirable place to work uh, within the Department of Corrections we do have some staff shortages but not nearly to the extent that other institutions do so uh, we're lucky to have you know many of our employees work and live or live in the community where they work so that's great for us and great for Tatchby. We have folks transferring in pretty regularly. People still like to come to Tatchby. We get pretty regular requests from new employees that go either to the academy or come from various places around the state. Sometimes I'm surprised at how far people come because they want to move to Tatchby. How many institutions are there in the state of California? You know that at the top of your head? <laughs> 33. 33. There you go. Okay, he, could, he could be lying. And we just be like, uh-huh. Yeah, it sounds <laughs> well, right Somebody out there will do a fact check. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Well, you know, you brought up the, you brought up the, the employment numbers. And uh, actually, Eric and I are working on this recently, trying to figure out how many how many live in this zip code and how many come from, you know, without. I think it was about 40% live in the zip code and then about 60% commute in. But you know, you think about that in terms of the, the economy, you've got 40% live here, shop here you know, uh, and then work here. And then you've got the 60% that are coming in, but in the meantime, they're buying fuel. They're sometimes picking up groceries on the way home if they're going back to Lancaster or Bakersfield. So there really is th- that employment base of 1,500 has a big impact economically because they're living here, or if they're not living here, they're still coming in here and spending money. Sure, yeah. they're buying their, their fuel, buying their you know snacks for work and things that they need come out for lunch. Some some end up, you know, when it snows, staying in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It happens you know, things too. Like that. We also have, uh, we have been working on, you know, it's not official, but what we call our Central Valley, or not Central Valley, but our Central uh, California Training Center, where we bring, uh, we, hold, we hold training classes, statewide training classes. And so we bring and you're using people that from the- all over the state into CC for uh, large large scale trainings on our one of our facilities out there. Yeah, using the old level one yard that was recently yes. shuttered for for inmate population. But uh, what what got you with you know uh, what does that kind of opportunity provide and what kind of came up how that idea come about to use this closed facility for a training ground? We wanted to do something with you know it's the oldest facility there. We wanted to do something with it. Our training staff are phenomenal. They're heavily involved you know up and down the state with training. And when they threw the idea around and and kind of pitched it to some of the the statewide trainers they loved it because it's a real world application they can come to a place that has pretty temperate weather and utilize actual prison grounds for their training which they seem to really like that usually brings in 80 to 125 people in detached before a week at a time staying in the hotels eating uh, eating at the restaurants and completing their training at cci which which the participants seem to like as well and you're able to take advantage of that facility while it was still in good you know working order for the most part i mean because oh, sure. these things have happened there's been closures across the state here and there but you let it go and then all of a sudden you know just you can't it's not safe to really necessarily be in so uh, kudos to you guys for actually jumping on that right away while the facility was still sort of operational yeah we want it we really you know, we love that facility we want to make the most of it so we're trying to, to keep it viable in every way possible nice and you have a partnership with the hospital at Venice health right because you have you have a couple thousand inmates stuff happens right and sure. so you transport to uh, Adventist and to Hatchaby so not that I want anyone to ever um, you know see harm or get hurt but we have a full service hospital that is part of your kind of network locally it's a good thing yes we use it uh, the local Adventist health hospital quite extensively for especially for for emergency uh, situations or things that you know we want to get looked at in a hurry, we transport them over, and they're great. They, you know, we get in, get our stuff done, and get it out real, get out of there real quick. So, and there's no interference with the public too. I'm told it's separated, so there's no mm-hmm. no concerns there for safety, right? Don't don't be afraid of that. It is part of the complete picture. Yeah, and they do a great job there. You're, like you said, they keep us separated, run us in, get whatever needs are taken care of, and we go back to our institution. Yeah. Let's roll back to some of the programs that you have because I I part of that meeting that we had attended um, a few weeks back, you talked about some innovative ways that you're reaching inmates. You've, from the outside world, there's been some entities that have come in and done some creative things. And I was really fascinated by that, having uh, you know worked in law enforcement and working in secured facilities. And just to see what was being done, I thought was very creative. We've, uh, we've worked hard to try to change the way
way prison per se looks and, and what kind of things we can do in prison. I'll let Bart talk a little bit about some of the uh, the programs that we brought in and the people we brought in to, to help bring things together, bring folks together, and just kind of make prison look a little and feel a little different for at least for a time. Not like an old Johnny Cash movie, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's prison the, music video. Yeah, and, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> It's just one of those things like the warden was saying, the population just doesn't know about prison. All they know is what they've seen on prison break, what they've seen on lockup. And it's just this big, scary entity that nobody knows about. So we've been great about welcoming in these groups, welcoming in these documentaries, welcoming JR, who's a French photographer. Um, he does street mural art, and he pastes these these murals that of these photos that he takes of of people, of, of objects, of scenes. And so he had this great idea, and... He partnered with Scott Budnick, who was one of the, I guess, assistant producers of The Hangover. He's been doing um, youth advocacy in CDCR for years. And JR and Scott Budnick partnered together, and JR wanted to do a project in a prison. And Scott's like, you know what? I can get you in there. And JR did a project with Governor Newsom one time, and Governor Newsom said, you know what? I'll, I'll give you access wherever you want to go. Well, lo and behold, they went on Google Maps, and JR saw. CCI, Facility A, Facility B, and said, that's where I want to go. Little did JR know that Facility A, Facility B at CCI are not normal places you want to go visit and not normal places you think you're going to do an art project. So he just saw this big opportunity and saw an obstacle that he didn't think, other people didn't think he can overcome. Scott Budnick himself was just like, I, I don't know if you can do that there. And JR told me, well, you, you don't know what art can do. You don't know the power of art. And luckily he started this art project and I was the lieutenant on the facility when this happened. And previous uh, PIO Elias Garcia, who's now a captain, kind of facilitated this whole program in October 2019. And JR brought his whole team, brought a whole crew to, to film it and do a documentary about the art with these different inmates, these different groups of inmates, these different ethnic backgrounds of inmates who normally do not operate together. But he got these these individuals. We picked about 40 inmates to work together and do an art project. And they all took their photos along with some of us staff. And it was just a project together. And with this project together, these, these inmates worked together for a week. And throughout this, JR kept connections with these uh, the inmates there. And three-fourths of them throughout this program, we, we picked inmates that were on this level four facility who were doing good things. You know, we didn't want to doing the project from the beginning. We, we saw inmates that were doing positive things on a difficult yard, and we wanted to reward them to continue their good behavior on a, on a yard that typically doesn't have the greatest behavior. And with that, it was enough incentive for these guys to continue doing what they're doing. We even found one inmate who I myself even said no to the project originally. And the staff on the yard said, you know what? No, he's doing good. He's going to do good. He needs an opportunity. So we allowed it. And today he's one of the inmates who went down to our level three facility, our, our positive or progressive program facility. He is now one of the mentors on the yard and he 100% puts it on this documentary and JR coming and staff actually noticing his change and noticing the things that he was doing and what he was able to do. And they all thank this opportunity from this documentary that has actually turned into a, a movie, a film and was shown worldwide last December. And we went to a premiere and down in LA and it was a lot of fun. It's It's been seen around the world, been seen by millions and they've actually been back two other times to film one of the inmates that was in, involved in the project paroled last year. That's a powerful story just now. You know, what I got out of that is we're not just babysitting people. We're actually guarding them. We're actually participating and trying to help them along. Mentor, you said mentor a couple of times, but mentoring these men so that when they do get paroled, they know that the world's out there and we're rooting for them. That's, that's right? the We're biggest, rooting for them. And that's the biggest misconception is they think we're just there to sit and watch and make sure nothing bad happens. But in essence, we all form relationships. I've known these guys since that's been involved in this group since probably 2018. And I could walk on the yard. I'll say hi to them. I greet them. Same thing with staff. They know these guys. Nobody's ever going to see it, but that's part of why we wanted this documentary to come in and see what the actual relationship is within a prison and what we actually do. We're actually mentors. We're actually, you know, we're not just guards sitting and watching, but we're talking to these people. We're coaching them. We're, we're life coaches in a way. And, and as much as people don't always want to come out and say, hey, you know, just because of the misconception of big, tough guard, that's it's honestly, it's the greatest accomplishment that we have within our jobs is making sure these guys go. And when we watch them leave, we tell them, I don't want to see you come back. And we mean it. We, yeah. we don't mean it in a, in a mean way or a bad way. Like we legitimately do not want to see them come back. 
And the JR projects were the, the I guess it's mache, paper mache, technically. He did the photos. The, and the, the, probably the most famous one is the aerial he took of the yard, which he imposed that photo on the yard, on the concrete of uh, inmates and staff kind of looking up. Very cool image. Uh, and then he came back with a couple more scenery type stuff on the walls and some staff photos and, and, and inmate photos as well, right? Yeah, so that was the main one. It just kicked it all off with, with the big aerial footage, and he brought, I don't know how expensive this drone was, but one of the best drones, camera drones in the world, and took that photo and, and then turned into some landscape photos. We have the mountain scene on one of the facil- on the same facility where if you looked at it from a certain vantage point, it looked like the wall disappeared, and you can just see the mountain range behind it. Stealth yeah. technology. Yeah. <laughs> you know, make no mistake, these, these guys are in prison because of a crime. I mean, they committed, in some cases, a very serious crime. But if they are paroled, we want them to live a better life. And that's part of what you're describing. Even the guys that don't leave, it makes it safer for us overall, too. If we're helping the guys that are staying that are not going to get out, I'd rather have a safer environment because we're rehabilitating the guys as well that are staying, not just the ones that are leaving. Well, it speaks volumes because you mentioned that staff actually said, no, this, this guy deserves an opportunity. That blew me away because I've, you know, worked in a jail facility and, and seen that. And that's not a, a common thing. So that's, you know, like you said, you there's these connections. You, you, you're you around these prisoners for extended periods of time. You start to see their tendencies and say, no, this is an opportunity that he's going to thrive on. I think you said the power of art. Mm-hmm. And there was something probably about it being art that connected to him and brought him to a different place mentally. So he's actually one of the ones on the movie and he picks it right up, and it's it's on the film. If you go and watch Paper and Glue, go ahead and look that up. Go on your Fire Stick, Paper and Glue. Go on Instagram, go at JR to go see some of this. But he's one of the ones, JR said it took him years, and he said himself, the art isn't what we're putting up. The art is what we're doing to complete this. He's like, that's the art. That's the relationship. That's that's where all this is happening. It's not this, this pasting that we're putting up on a wall or on the ground. We're creating the art. Like, we're the art of of the change. And, and that's his biggest whole mentality with JR is can art change the world? And it's not going to change the entire world, but it's going to change some things. And it, it definitely has changed some things at CCI. Well, it seems like the art, the educational opportunities, the faith opportunities, you're making lemonade out of lemons, right? You are the recipient of Sacramento's rules, the recipient of the voters will different things are, we're changing the dynamics of prisons and and people being locked up are changing, but you're able to spin it in a way that it's a positive for the employees and for the inmates. Absolutely. The, we constantly work towards the goal of having a safer place to live and work for the employees that are there, eight hours a day, 16 hours a day, and the inmates who live there. In addition, our service to the public is safety, and the more rehabilitated inmates that we release, the safer it is for the public. Sure. Yeah, it's a part of the uh, the overall public safety goals that we all have as government entities, and, and yours is a part of that that rehabilitation, that R they get added i'm so used to it being cdc and then several years ago the r at the end was added and that was the rehabilitation that's something that you guys are talking about right here that's a key ingredient in this entire with what you're doing and i'm kind of curious as since jr picked tehachapi could have gone anywhere he wanted to pick tehachapi What's the feedback been with the other institutions within uh, the prison system? I, I bet you you guys have heard a little something back, whether it's other wardens or you know other PIOs that have said, hey, I can't believe that you guys were able to do this. Or What's the feedback? When you go to like? the warden conference, is there yeah. such thing? <laughs> <laughs> there, there is. There is. Okay. We have warden conferences a couple times a year. Okay. And I get everything from that is a really large project to take on for an institution, especially uh, on a, a level four facility. How did you get that done? And you know, largely, I tell them, I gave them access. I made it safe, and I let it happen because it can be done. Uh, so, uh, you know, you get lots of different questions, but that seems to be the most uh, the most common. Pretty big project for for, for an institution to, to bring in a lot of people and parts and pieces to bring in. How did that work out? And uh, it actually worked out much smoother than one might anticipate. Because you could easily just say, eh, I'm good, good. right? And then roll with it. But you took on extra responsibility, extra work, extra extra return 
sure. at the end of the extra, day. Extra attention, right? Yeah. A lot of a lot of people did a lot of work to you know move that many non prison employees in and out and around and you know flying drones. Mm-hmm. Aircraft typically don't fly around prisons. Drones are specifically not allowed in prisons. Mm-hmm. So you know we did a lot of things to uh, just to control the environment so that we could do some of the things that aren't normally. Yeah, done because I prison. wouldn't expect prisons. You don't want to be on the front page, right? You want to just be over here doing your thing and as long as you don't make the front page you're doing your job well that is a pretty common yeah thought, yes <laughs> but then you took on extra responsibility you went on a limb and said you know what let's do something that's going to benefit because you didn't have to do it well, i think that's no. the new thing about cci yeah. is we want to be on the front page just like the tra- well and the training too right there. you want to bring people that are employed by cdcr to to Hatchaby to train them to make to encourage them to you know be safer and, and know more about their job and you know, kind of expand their horizons, if you will. Absolutely. We want to want CCI to be an, an important prison to the city, mm-hmm. to the state, to, to everyone to everyone involved. That's what we're doing in the city of Tehachapi. You know, we try very hard to have, to be the best city in Kern County. So right. why not have the best prison? Why not? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, way to put it. You know, it, it really, too, it seems like with some of the changes in how uh, the operations are statewide, there was a lot of integration in the past with whether it was inmates in the community doing work projects, what it would be. I know that stuff's kind of changed the state level. So I think now there maybe is a little less engagement with the public than they did, they'd had with the inmates in the past. I mean, heck, until probably 15 years ago. The exit for Tatchby said correctional institution on it. The word Tatchby wasn't even on the 202 sign. It just said correctional institution. That was it. Um, so there, there's been a little more, or there was a little more integration in the past. But so now it seems like you guys kind of have to do that. Sort of put yourselves out a little bit to let people know, hey, we're still doing a lot of stuff. We might not be in the community picking up trash or, or, or doing weed control like we used to, but we're still out. We're still here doing good work. Sure, we want to let folks know that we're still here. We're still part of the community. We, we, you know, we've been in Tatchby for almost a hundred years. We want to be good partners and, and helpful to the community of Tatchby. I think this is one of those. This is one of those uh, professions in terms of just you know whether it's whether it be a CEO or whether it be somebody working in the facility in another role for Tatchby. It's one of those professions where there's no way you don't know somebody who either works the facility or knows somebody who has a family member that works the facility. I mean, it's one of those really, everybody's got a connection to this facility because of somebody they know who works there. Well, yeah, look at, look at the population of the city and then look how many we employ here. It's, yeah. it's inevitable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We've talked about a lot of different things and I think we'd love to have you come back on. I hopefully when we're all done here, this will be a good experience and we'll be able to have a, a part two and maybe talk about new projects that are coming. Before we wrap things up, I want to ask you, is there anything that we didn't touch on that you think would be important to share to the community that, to give them a better understanding of CCI? With taking on some of these opportunities that we don't think other people would, it's it has opened up a lot of doors and we got a lot of stuff going on and we're excited and hopefully uh, it keeps coming. I think, uh, well, since you talked about the state, like you know, the approval process, since we know that most likely there's folks going to be listening to this, take this opportunity to say that Warden Cates and and Lieutenant here are doing a phenomenal job right. and uh, you should invest in this facility heavily because they're doing great work. Yeah, when Governor Newsom <laughs> listens, and I know he will. That's right. I, yeah. I know yeah. he will. Uh huh. Let's make sure we fund uh, whatever they need at uh-huh. CCI. At there, the we'll end see. of the day, you know, <laughs> Tatchby has a, a beautiful economic situation. You know, we talk about aerospace a lot. We talk about agriculture a lot, mining a lot, but we don't always say CCI. And at the end of the day, $200 million into the Tehachapi economy, that's top five, Mm -hmm. right? That's a big deal. So thank you for doing a good job. Thank you for participating today. But, and thank you for keeping, you know, your employees safe, the inmates safe and being part of, you know, a a great economic engine that we have here in the greater Tehachapi area. Thank you so much for having us on. For sure. Yeah, it was a blast. We'll be back. Yeah. Let's do it again. All right. See, we'll hold them to it. Uh-huh. We'll be back. <laughs> so, uh, guys, in closing, uh, anything else that you wanted to uh, touch on? I mean, it's been good. I, I think the, the numbers, again, that $200 million that's a part of our local economy, thanks to what goes on behind the walls of CCI as you guys are able to do things and interact with our charities, interact with local businesses where you can. It's a big deal. Any support that we can at least recognize and you know acknowledge that work and the you know whether it's the creative rehabilitative programs that you guys are doing to make sure that when people get out of prison that they're a more positive and have the ability to interact in our society i think that's things that we need to acknowledge 
All right, folks, if there's anything that you would like us to talk about, or maybe it's questions for Eric or Brian and uh, what goes on at CCI that we didn't touch on, send those to media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We're going to invite them to come back here in the future, talk about uh, additional programs that are going on at CCI. So again, media at TehachapiCityHall.com for your feedback. We appreciate your time, and we'll catch you again soon. Tehachapod is a conversation about Tehachapi designed for the people who live here or who would like to know more about this mountaintop community. If you have a question you would like answered, email media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We will try to answer it on a future episode of Tehachapod.